What's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode. This is part two of the High Desert Riot Blacks versus Whites Bloodshed. So when we went on lockdown over the riot, as I said, I was on the lower yard. So I didn't see the riot, but, you know, it, it, it happened on the upper yard. But I know everything that happened in the riot because we are all communicating with each other, the upper yard and the lower yard. We have a structure as well where we know how to communicate with each other. Oftentimes in prison on a level four yard, particularly a level four 180 and really in the shoe. And I did 38 months in the shoe program over these riots that I'm speaking about right now with the white boys in high desert because this war with them over this CD lasted over three years. It's a lot to this story, man. It gets, it gets crazy. Okay, so we go on lockdown. We're communicating with each other. And my thing is I want to respond and I want to respond swiftly. Not only that, I want the response to be very bloody because I want to send a message. I'm disinclined by my nature, as is most black people, to be violent. We are naturally and innately a calm, peaceful, loving, and forgiving people. In fact, most of the time, that's our problem. We forgive too much. We let too much slide. And I'm of the mindset that sometimes in order to get our respect as men, some things cannot be tolerated and some things cannot be forgiven. That's just it. It's important that you understand my mindset going into this response so we're all communicating and we all told each other okay fine we're going to respond fast after about three months they let us off lockdown they sent the mac reps around what you call mac reps i'll get into that later these are representatives of your group of your faction and whenever an incident happens in prison they send the mac reps around the police do to make sure everything is squashed, everything is good before they let you off lockdown. The MAC reps go back to the police. They say, yeah, everything good, man. We talked to our people. That shit is squashed. Certainly, they know this situation is not squashed. So when our MAC rep comes around, the black MAC rep, he just comes to ourselves because we have already communicated. We already know what we're going to do. Ain't nothing to talk about. He just come to our cell and say, bro, we'll be on lockdown tomorrow. You know what's up? Yep. We'd already said, everybody, make sure you have a knife. A good knife. We've been on lockdown for three months. We had enough time to make our knives, have our shit together. We're not out here to play. Be ready. So we came out. They only let about 20 blacks out because... They did a slow release. Instead of letting the whole yard out, they wanted to let a few people out at a time to see if it was going to crack off. So they let about five blacks out of each building. So it's only about 20 of us out here and about 20 whites. We got our knives. I was one of the ones that came out at first. So it's about five of us over there talking, five of the main dudes. And we're deciding whether we want to get off on them now or give some more blacks a chance to come out because they want to get involved. These other blacks, they want a part of these people. And we don't want to take all the glory away from them because yeah, it's going to be, a, we, we're on the first wave, but it's going to be a while before the second wave gets to do their thing, gets to shine. And they want to smash these dudes because we're fed up at this time. 
what happened at Pelican Bay in 2000 is still simmering amongst black people on every level four yard. We want to respond. I want to respond. I was pushing for the, a response from the blacks everywhere over what happened in Pelican Bay. And let me just say, speaking of Pelican Bay, that yes, I said some blacks ran and they did. But there are also many blacks that did not run, even though they were unprepared and they didn't have knives. In fact, the footage would show that some blacks were knocking out some Southsiders. Some Southsiders hit the ground. They got knocked out. One black knocked like five or six of them out by himself. So shout out to those blacks that didn't run, even though they were outnumbered. They were outnumbered because of the blacks that did run leaving them there. So now they're severely outnumbered and they have no knives and these dudes have big bone crushers and they still stood there and fought like men. So everyone did not run, but we're still upset over the attack in Pelican Bay and how it all went down. And we haven't responded properly yet, as far as I'm concerned. And so I want to send a message. Now, here we go again. Three years later, in 2003, now the white boys are attacking us. Stabbing blacks up. Man, these dudes think we a joke. We just a whipping boy for this fucking country. Everybody want to take their anger and stress out on us. And we're supposed to continue to accept this and turn the other cheek. I'm just telling you, this is my mindset. I'm saying these things to the blacks on the yard. No, no. We finna respond right now. Good. But we made the decision. We're waiting till tomorrow only because we, you know, we wanted to send a message to the police that it was over, even though they knew that it wasn't, so they can let some more people out. Now, I heard Dub said on his page that, you know, in his experience, the first wave of blacks be the strongest ones. And then after that, you know, the second and third wave, they don't be that strong. Well, not so. Particularly right here in high desert. This right here in high desert is the cream of the crop. The wheat have already been filtered out. They're gone. They've been stabbed up. They're off the yard. These are strong dudes on this yard. High desert. The realest, strongest, most violent prison I have ever been to. Everyone up here was strong. The Northanios were strong. They had Northanios up there killing shit, stabbing shit up. Serranos, same thing, stabbing shit up. White boys, stabbing shit up. It was all night play. Blacks stabbing shit up. Blacks stabbing up the police. Most of the police assaults are committed by black people behind those walls. We don't play with nobody. Don't get it twisted. And so up here, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, the hundred wave was going to be very strong. Everyone was going to be strong because we were upset. And we wanted to respond and get these dudes. That's it. So the next day we came out the yard. Everyone had their knives. The plan was already in place. We we Somebody was going to walk around the yard by five blacks and go over there towards the whites. Some more blacks was going to come from, from the other way to box them in. And some blacks were going to come from across the yard to box them all the way in from side to side to this way. They couldn't get out. It was a strategic attack. It was structured. And we were angry. And we attacked. Boom, 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 boom. We had our things. We had, we, we had weaponry.
They started hitting the ground. A couple of them started running. They were getting knocked out and knocked down. One of them, his face got slit wide open. They say, get down. Now, in some prisons, when they say, get down, because something is happening on the yard, you have to lay all the way down on your stomach, prone out, face down. Some prisons, you can just sit down. Ironically, in high desert, you just sit down. I say ironically because so much happens, it's so violent, you would think that they would make you prone out. But thankfully not. You sit down in high desert. So they say, get down. So we still on them for a little bit, but they got the guns. We know that these motherfuckers ready to shoot us. The police, they didn't already set us up. And we want to send a message to them too. Y'all done set us up. Y'all done search the white boys. When the shit happened on the upper yard, let, let them get their fucking knives out and attack the blacks. We know what you did. We're not stupid. And we're about to send a message to everybody. No more of this shit. No more Pelican Bay, buddy. You motherfuckers better be ready. In fact, as I said, I want to go on the offensive and respond to what happened in Pelican Bay. That's what I'm pushing for. But getting back to this. So get out. We sit down. Finally, the police come running in. They're spraying. They got their sticks out. They're trying to almost hit the blacks. They're pissed off that we didn't attack their boys. And some of them are out there bleeding. But after we're sitting down for a while, the homie Bam, who's a blood, he's a down move. He be pushing his black agenda. He got back up because he was angry. And he ran over there and he hit the white boy again. Boom, boom, boom. About three times. And then the rest of the blacks jumped back up. And we got on them again. Boom, 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 boom. Now they started shooting. They shot Bam in the leg with the gun. We call the gun uh, uh, Mama Mini. It's a Mini 14, like a uh, it, it, we call it Mama Mini. I, my bad. They told me not to say those words, those certain words on here anymore. Thank all of you guys who reached out to me and told me to be careful about the words I say on here. And I'm still saying it. My bad. My bad, YouTube. I'm going to get better at this. And so finally we get out. And they put us on lockdown. But now, understand, in these riots, you got to stay on the yard for hours they stripping you out if people got hurt they got to get them out of here got to process you back in get your id because you're going to the hole at some point if they don't take you right then and there but oftentimes they don't because there's so many people put us back in our cells come get us later or whatever sometimes they may not come get us and a white boy got carted off he, he, he went on the ambulance. He got sent off on the ambulance. Check it out. Go back and look at it. Because we were fed up. And we wanted to send a message that it's not happening anymore. And I'm always on the offensive. Me personally. Because when I was in CYA, when I was in Paso, I don't know if Dubs remember this. I know Bolo do. He was there. We had a riot with the Nortenos. And five of them got on me. Five of them. Were socking on me. Three motherfuckers hit the ground. I wasn't one of them. Check it out. Ask Bolo on them. I knocked three of them out. I was 16 in this 1990. But my point is, that all my life, people been telling me, man, I ain't, I ain't about to fight your big ass. Got to pick up something to knock you upside the head. So I already know I'm not about to get ahead of fight from most people. And when they come at me, they come at me aggressively because they in fear. They feel like I'm, go I'm going to get the best of them, which more than likely I am physically. And 
So they got to give themselves, them, themselves the best chance. And they can only do that by being overly aggressive. And so I've learned early on in my life to be overly aggressive. Because since I know that you're not coming to play with me, I'm not about to play with you. I'm about to take your ass down because I know you're trying to take me down. And with the white boys and them attacking us, I wanted to send a clear message. With the shit that happened in Pelican Bay, I wanted to send a new message, a real message. We ain't going for this shit no more. We about to start killing y'all ass. Oh, my bad. We, we, we're, about to start, we're about to start responding to y'all. We're about to respond in these prisons. We've been responding. Don't get me wrong. More of that coming up. But we were upset about Pelican Bay. And we were upset about the white boys attacking us on the upper yard. And we responded. And every black had a thing. There was no hands on. Every black had a thing. And some people got hurt. And we went on lockdown for years. Years. And then I ended up going to the shoe over that. More on that coming up. But the response was good. The response was swift. And there was a lot of carnage and a lot of damage. These are not things to be proud of. Because prison is dangerous and violent. All of these people are somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's father. They're all human beings. The white boys, us, the Serenios, the Norteños, the others, everyone in prison is just living in total abject misery. And so, this is not to impute or ascribe blame to anyone. But we know why the white boys were able to attack us with those knives. And so next on the list was to consider a response for that, for arming them against us. What should we do about that, black people? Well, I had an idea and people were beginning to listen. More on that coming up.